Well, hello and welcome to another video by Financial Learning. On today's video, we're going to take a look at CleanSpark Inc.'s May monthly mining numbers. That's right, the month of May is over. So using their publicly traded wallet, we can get a first look as to how much Bitcoin was mined for the month. Also, what that revenue number actually came out at. And then using last month's information, I'm able to calculate a pretty good estimate as to what the profit margins will be. And just so you're aware, this is the highest month of revenue to date that I have ever noticed. If you think I am wrong, please share with me a different month where they've made this much revenue. Love to hear about it. Also, we're going to take a look at their cash flow and see just how much of that cash is remaining. How much Bitcoin are they still able to hodl after paying for the month of May operations? So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, and jumping straight into the May numbers. Now there's a lot to digest here. I'm gonna start from the left and work my way over. Starting with the left there, you can see their publicly traded wallet information. And I did highlight one of the rows, and that's because there was a 900 Bitcoin transaction that occurred in the month of May. Now in April, we did see some other transactions as well. And in their press release, they did talk about how they did utilize some of that coin baseline of credit. So they did have to lock up some of their Bitcoin as collateral. Now, I will have a link to this publicly traded wallet address in the description of this video. I know it's kind of hard to read on this screen. But moving over into this middle section here, this gray, yellow, and green columns here, the first thing I want to point out is going to be on the daily Bitcoin mining amount. I do have the highest daily mined bolded here, and that was on May 24th. It was 23.4401 mined on that specific day. Moving over to the daily Bitcoin revenue, the maximum amount of daily revenue in the month of May was actually on May 23rd, and that was $2,586,891. And one other thing I do have here is going to be the global hash rate. And I went ahead and bolded the highest amount of hash rate globally for each of these days. And it was actually on May 6th, and it was 1,036 exahash. Now, moving up a little bit further, I do talk a little bit about hash rate because in order to be able to calculate an estimate on that energy cost to mine the Bitcoin, you do need to know what that global hash rate was for the month. So I do have the average global hash rate coming in at 897.10 exahash. Now, taking a look at the average Bitcoin mined in the month of May, it came in at 22.3327. And the overall May monthly mining amount was 692.3136. So an excellent month for CleanSpark in the month of May. Now take a look at that revenue number. This is what I think is the highest monthly revenue so far for CleanSpark as a Bitcoin mining company. It came in at $71,762,625. And again, as I mentioned in the intro, if you think that there was another month that I am neglecting about, please let me know in the comments. But moving over, taking a look at that April HODL amount, it was 12,101, and that was disclosed in that press release for April. But you can see I do have them still able to HODL some additional Bitcoin, and I have them selling 360 Bitcoin in the month of May, and that's going to cover their monthly operations. I will go over that when I talk about their free cash flow in just a minute, but just wanted to kind of point that out there. So if you take their overall amount mined minus the 360 and then you take that difference and add it to their existing hodl their new hodl for the month of may ending would be 12,433.55 bitcoin now again that is assuming that they are only selling enough bitcoin to cover the cost of operations and that these margins that i've calculated are accurate so we'll have to wait for the company to get the exact numbers but i'm doing my best to give you a quick estimate here now, taking a look at April's margin amount, it was only 37%. And that was based off of that press release information, knowing that they sold for the covering of cost of operations only. That is how I'm able to figure out what that April amount was. Now, knowing that profit margin and knowing some of the other information for the month of April, like the global hash rate, I do have them estimated that the energy cost did go back down to just five cents per kilowatt hour. So we'll have to see if that sticks. We'll get that in the earnings at the end of the quarter. But moving on, just want to point out a couple other items here. So 
in the month of April, the average cost for the Bitcoin was $86,446. Now for the month of May, it was actually $105,417. So that is a huge change in the average price of Bitcoin looking at the month of April compared to May. So if we continue to see this trajectory, we could see Bitcoin hitting around 110, 115, maybe even 120 in the month of June. We'll just have to wait and see. But this is pretty exciting to see the price of Bitcoin continue to rise. That does help, of course, with the revenue amount. But if we do finish the quarter of June with a very high Bitcoin amount, that is going to help them on their EPS and their overall earnings because they are going to be able to get a positive fair valuation of the Bitcoin that they've been holding. Now, moving over, I just wanted to point out some of the April numbers just to kind of remind you. So in the month of April, they did have a 36.94% profit margin. Their overall revenue in the month of April was $54,720,000. So comparing the two months, it's a significant jump in revenue. So again, exciting things for CleanSpark. All right. And before I jump into the cash flow, let's talk a little bit about global hash rate and also that level of difficulty factor. So I do have the month of May charted out here. And again, I do have the link in the description of exactly where I find this information. I'll have it in this video. But the reddish pinkish line there, that is actually the difficulty level. And you can see that at the end of May, there was a jump up again, another step up in terms of level of difficulty. And you can actually see that in the daily mining amounts for CleanSpark. They were hitting consistently in the 23s and the last two days of the month, they did drop back down into the 22s. So again, that does correlate there with level of difficulty. I am going to be interested to see how their overall hash rate numbers look because again, the average hash rate has increased in the month of May compared to April and even compared to March. So again, with the global hash increasing, but CleanSpark still able to maintain healthy daily Bitcoin mining amounts. I do think that we'll see an update in terms of hash rate for CleanSpark on this next press release. Now, talking about that green, yellow, and then it starts to turn into orange, that is actually the moving average of global hash rate for the month of May. And you can see that it did start to peak up a little bit there near the end of May. And also the lighter color, that's actually going to be the daily global hash rate. So that's the daily amount that you would see me charting. Again, I will share a link to the description for my daily global hash rate numbers as well. But moving over into the table, now I do have with and without depreciation. And as I've said on other videos, I don't really look at the with depreciation line number because that depreciation amount is not actually cutting into their free cash on a month to month basis. That depreciation is just used to help them reduce their overall tax burden. So again, they will need to be able to fund new miners at some point once these existing miners do reach end of life. But from my calculations and from what CleanSpark shared, they still have about a year and a half left or so. So plenty of time before we have to worry about that. And just to remind you, CleanSpark has over 300,000 miners and they're only using about 200,000. So again, they have a healthy backlog of Bitcoin miners. Now, we don't know if some of those are older miners that need to be sold, some of them that are just uh, spares for repairs, or if they're newer miners that are ready to be plugged into new infrastructure as it's built out. But we'll get a better idea as they release these next couple of press releases and we see that hash rate increase. Let's focus on without depreciation. So you can see I do have the overall Bitcoin break even price coming in at $53,864.97. And that's because I do have this cost to my Bitcoin calculator all put out and it has the average global hash rate for the month of May at 897. And I do have CleanSpark's last disclosed efficiency, which was 16.98 joules per terahash. So with those two numbers, plus the power cost, which I do believe is at five cents per kilowatt hour, you can actually calculate the energy cost to mine the Bitcoin. And that comes in at $39,433. And you can see that I have it highlighted as yellow on this row here. And that's what I'm using for both the with and without depreciation amount. Now the with depreciation amount, of course, is a lot higher because that is including the depreciation cost of the miners when looking at that number. So just remember that if you are comparing the two columns. 
Moving down, you can see the overall cost to mine in terms of energy was $27,300,119. And that was for the entire month of May. Looking at their SG&A amounts, you can see professional fees, payroll, and G&A expenses. I do have them completely flushed out for the entire month. So when you add up the SG&A with the energy cost to mine Bitcoin, the overall spend on operations for the month of May came in at $37,291,452. So looking at the revenue, subtracting this amount, CleanSpart had a May monthly profit of $34,471,172. And of course, this is just my estimate based off of some of these assumptions here. And that leaves them with a 48.03% profit margin percent. That is a rather healthy, healthy margin. And with that, you can see I do have calculated a little bit further down the overall Bitcoin to hold. So they're able to hold almost 50% of their overall Bitcoin mine for the month of May. And let's talk a little bit about cash flow and then we'll jump down onto that number. So again, looking at the start of the quarter, they had $96,982,000 in terms of free cash and they had a total of 200 million on their Coinbase line of credit. Looking at their quarter to date expenses, again, this is the April and May, energy and SGNA costs comes in at $71,798,743. So if you take the two revenue amounts for April and then this one in May, and then subtract this quarter to date cost, you're gonna get their overall profit margin amount. But one other item that I have went ahead and subtracted is their overall commitments that they did mention on that last earnings release. And that commitment amount was $159,553,000. And that commitment includes things like their infrastructure for the immersion miners, as well as an open purchase order for some more immersion miners. So again, I do believe we will see them tapping into that commitment costs this next month or two, and that's because they are planning to hit that 50 exahash by the end of June. So I would expect them to be spending some of this money this quarter. So just planning on them spending the entire thing here in May, just like I did in April, you can see here that they have a total amount of cash balance without Coinbase at actually a negative $60,919,000. So tapping into that Coinbase line of credit, which we know they did because they disclosed that in April, they have a total cash availability at $139,080,000. So again, healthy amount of free cash still remaining with a very hefty overall Bitcoin treasury amount. So I think I forgot to mention what that Bitcoin treasury amount is, but it's actually a little bit over $1.3 billion. And that's based off of the current trading price for Bitcoin. But moving down a little bit further, just talking about that monthly Bitcoin to huddle, I do have them adding this 332.55 Bitcoin to their treasury. And the rest of that would have been sold in order to pay for the cost to mine and the SGNA for the month of May. Now, recall last month, they did a great job of selling the Bitcoin above the monthly average price. I think they sold it around 90,000 per Bitcoin, whereas the average was somewhere around mid 80s. So I'm gonna be interested to see how the CleanSpark team did this month in May. And then remember, they've already talked about that crawl, walk, run, and how they're gonna be phasing that in. And part of that is this covered call option. So again, if they're already planning on selling some of their Bitcoin in the month, then they're able to do a three-day or a five-day call option. And potentially, if it doesn't hit that number, they're able to collect the premiums and they can still sell the Bitcoin, but they've just recouped about a thousand dollars per bitcoin so again this is just another great strategy that clean spark is now tapping into in order to help increase some of their revenue amounts all right and that about wraps up for me hope you enjoyed this quick month of may update here for clean spark if you did enjoy the video consider giving it a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and drop a comment how do you think clean spark did this month are you excited about this record-breaking revenue amount i know i am love to hear your thoughts on that as well with all that said, hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep calm, hash on, and I'll see you on the next one.